This is a green text of violence, greed, lies, love, sex, conspiracy, death, and chocolate. This is the story of time I sold chocolate in high school. Me, grew up in a low-income family. Beginning of freshman year. School is organizing a trip to Europe next year. $3,200. I want to go. School offers fundraiser by selling chocolate bars from local candy business. No one but me fundraisers, because all the other kids are rich fat who have the trip immediately paid for. How it works is that you buy chocolate at 50 cents each. The money you spent is transferred to your trip account. Then you sell it for one dollar to make it back. So it's one dollar chocolate and you make 50 cents for each one sold. There were five flavors, milk, peanut butter, caramel, pretzel. Time to get to work. Buy a box of chocolate and start selling it around the school. It goes well, sell the entire box within three days. Then another, and another. By the end of the month I've sold ten boxes, then fortune strikes. School shuts down vending machines for health wellness reasons. No one can buy snacks anyone from school. Everyone turns to me for their snacks. Profits through the roof. How yes point PNG. Raise $1000 in 3 months. At this rate I'll have the trip funded in no time. Enter fat wheel call Kirk. Tall, lanky, kid with acne all over face. Is an ass to everyone and bullies those who can't fight back. One day selling to usual customer named Hugh. Hugh is a monster and troublemaker of school. Took two tasers to body and still fought off security and does cocaine regularly. He buys a peanut butter chocolate bar every day from me. I'm standing in the hallway doing business when Kirk comes over and takes my box from me. I tell him to give it back. Nah, uh, all these bars are mine fat. What are you going to do about it? Hugh proceeds to punch Kirk in the face. Knockout point pdf. Hugh picks up the box of chocolate, puts a dollar in the box, and takes a peanut butter out. No one hurts my chocolate man. Then he walks away as if nothing happened. Since this happened at the bottom of a staircase the faculty thinks he fell down the stairs and knocked himself out so no one got in trouble. Lol. Later I hire Hugh as my muscle to guard me and my chocolate. Pay him in peanut butter chocolate bars. Nothing of interest happens for the rest of the year, and I raise the full $3,200. However I don't stop selling. There is a loophole where if you fully fundraise your trip you can keep selling to have a little spending money on the trip. Sell as much as I can. Over the summer I get a job at a pizza place. Convince boss to sell my chocolate at front desk. I'm so hunger for cash I go door to door selling chocolate. Summer ends and I raise $1,000 for myself. Noise point peg. Go back to school and begin selling again. Have a few study halls. Best time to sell to bored kids. Cute 8 of 10 girl buys chocolate from me every day in study hall. It's almost always pretzel or milk. We talk a bit and become good friends. Next day my friend called me asking me how I was. He moved to a rich private school during middle school years back and we haven't talked since. Convo moves to chocolate. Light bulb point PNG. Hey bro, do you want to help me sell chocolate to help me fundraise for my trip? Sure bro. Well that was easy. Meet up on the weekend and I'd give him three boxes. Monday rolls around and he calls me. Hey dude, can I get some more boxes? Wait why? I sold out haha. Dumb. I give him 12 boxes a week. I should mention how I get the boxes. At first the teacher who was organizing the trip kept a whole bunch of boxes in his office and I would pick up what I needed, but eventually I grew out of this method, and after I got my license I would take my dad's truck and buy chocolate by bulk and store them in my cold basement. I would also keep the chocolate I would be selling in a mini fridge to be cold when I start selling. A true businessman. So I keep selling. October and I'm with the 8 of 10 selling her some chocolate. We'll call her Abby. Hey Anon, are you going to homecoming? No I don't think so, why? Oh, no reason. Pick up signals. Are you going? I don't know, I mean I have group, but no one is going with me, you know. Yeah, do you want to go to homecoming with me? She smiles. Of course. Chocolate just gave me a date. Go to homecoming. 
enjoy myself and so does Abby. We start dating. Chocolate gave me a girlfriend. After a month of dating I convince Abby to sell chocolate on my behalf as well. I now have my friend, Abby and Hugh employed to my chocolate business. So we continued selling chocolate for the rest of the year. At the end of the year I made $16,340. Wow point wow. So to any normal person this should have been raising alarms. However I got lucky to have a teacher who didn't care or understand how much money I was making. By all definitions I was breaking school policy. Maybe he felt pity for me and my family's financial situation. I'll next know. On the day before the trip he emailed me that he needed to give me the money in person before the trip instead of during since you can only bring a certain amount of cash overseas. I emailed him back and I would meet him at a restaurant. I texted you to pick me up and drive me to the meeting place and then drop me off. I'd need protection when carrying more money than I've ever seen in my life. It went like down like in movies. We walk in and my teacher was sitting at a table. He go up carrying a manila folder and walked past us, handing me the folder when walking past out the door. We walked out of the restaurant and he drove me back to my house. I opened the folder. Hundred dollar bills. Hugh got to my house and I tipped him $100. Thanks boss. Am I a mob boss now? The next day I bring $400 in cash for the trip and I go to Europe. It was a fun trip, went to multiple countries, and I'm glad that this was my first vacation, although I wished I could and I could have afforded it. I came back with gifts for my family and a beautiful amber necklace from Krakow for Abby. Overall the summer was great. First day of junior year. I came back to school a free man. Not carrying a box of chocolate felt weird. I didn't know what to do with my life. I was walking next to Abby in the hallway. Maybe I'll join a club or... I walked past a poster on the wall. I stopped and looked at it. Japan trip. Next year. $4,000. Abby saw me looking at the poster on the wall. Oh no don't tell me. Yep. She smiles. Time to get to work. So this trip was organized differently than the one before. It was a different group. A group of teachers who organized it had no sponsored fundraisers. And you had to make payments to the trip instead of the funds going to an account. I asked the teachers if I could do my own fundraiser. They agreed. I re-established my contact with the chocolate shop. The little Italian owner basically loved me and knew me by name. I asked if I could fundraise for my next trip. He said yes. I bought 30 boxes of chocolate and I loaded them into my truck and started organizing. So I knew that I had a good thing going here and that I could make huge. But I needed to expand my market. I first go people I know in other schools to see if they want to work for me. I get 3 guys from 3 different schools to work for me. Next I expand the delivery system. I get who to go and ship chocolate to my house every other day. I then finally turn my basement into my chocolate HQ. Boards filled with numbers of boxes sold, and who has what amount of boxes. Chocolate boxes are placed out by flavor on fold-out tables, waiting to be sold. The guys will call me when they needed chocolate and I would have a box waiting for them behind my house in the morning. I paid everyone who worked for me by the amount of boxes they sold in two weeks. I continued to pay you in peanut butter chocolate because cocaine pays. Junior year ends and the grand total is $20,000. My investment in QT Pie worked. She's one of my biggest sellers. Over the summer my employees and I become an actual friend group. We hang out, go camping the works. Summer ends and we are ready for our last year selling together. We get letter in the mail about new school policy. No eating in the halls or classrooms. No peanuts or nuts of any kind. Shit. We gather to decide what to do. We decide to go underground. We hide chocolate in our backpacks and sell in the shadows. The demand for snacks is greater than ever, and dealers for snacks start popping in. Most we pay off to stop selling, the good sellers we hire. I now have 15 employees working for me. Racking in the money. Some dealers get caught selling and get detention. They never rat us out, or who would kill them. Fugitively or literally I don't know. The year went by with one interruption. Cutie Pie was going to rat on us. Apparently there was a reward for the identify for a criminal chocolate dealer. She wanted to cash in. One of our dealers intercepted that. 
Hu went to work. Next day she wasn't at school. I asked Hu what he did. I didn't do anything boss, she was in a car crash. He smiled. Cutie Pie was in hospital from a car t-boning her. Head trauma. Doesn't remember anything at all. Turns out that he bought a youth car under a false identity, and followed her till he had the perfect time to strike, and ram into her. He doesn't have a scratch on him. I pay him with a box of peanut butter chocolate bars. Eventually they caught on to scheme, but it was too late. It was graduation time, and the end of selling. I sold 101,381 chocolate bars in my high school year. That's $50,000. I kept about 30,000 for myself. Went to Japan and I loved every moment. Me and girlfriend go to business school together. I can pay off most of my school when I graduate. Hugh runs a gang selling illegal goods. My friends all in some way go into business field. I ran a chocolate syndicate as a mob boss. I was a employee, a lover, a boss, a friend. Chocolate changed my life for the better, and I can't wait to see what the future holds.